Hello again and welcome to this tutorial for continuous join as you go for joining uh, small granny squares around a larger shape. Now this is being done in conjunction with the cherry blossom blanket and as you can see the colours are absolutely nothing like the blanket itself. I have got piles of samples of squares, um, things that I've started, things that I've taken apart and I tend to use them when I'm making um, sample tutorials and in this case I've just taken a whole load of little two round granny squares and this centre section of three large granny squares to uh, use for the tutorial today. So what you have to use is your imagination and assume that this is a blanket. Okay, it's a very small blanket, but it's got the same um, idea as a blanket in that it's got four sides. And that's all we need to know about for this um, tutorial. We are going to attach these squares all the way round with a continuous join as you go. So. I'm taking the colour, it's a dark brown that I've decided to use just to give you a good contrast and I'm going to go to my very first square. Now that is the square that is lined up next to the bottom corner. Now can you see this? Um, it's difficult to get it all to fit in. This square that's lined up to the bottom corner of the, let's call this the blanket. And what we're going to do is we're going to join up, around, down, up again, around, down, up, around, down, so on, all the way around the blanket. And you'll end up back where you started. But what you won't have done at that point is anything along the bottom because we're just doing this round three sides. But I'll talk about that when we come to it. So I'm going to take my first square and I'm going to attach the yarn in the corner. And there are various stitches you can use for the continuous join as you go. <clears throat> uh, probably most people will suggest you use a treble stitch uh, in UK terms. I tend to almost all the time use a half treble stitch because I think it's um, neater and makes a nicer um, right angled corner on the squares. But for the cherry blossom blanket, I've decided to go down to an even smaller stitch and use a double crochet. This is a single crochet in US terms, but in UK terms, a double crochet because I want the join to be as small as possible as um, I add these squares onto the edge of the blanket. So I've attached my yarn and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to put two double crochets, which is just a case of putting your hook into the corner space, pulling up a loop, yarning over and pulling through two. So that is my chain one and two uh, double crochets. Then I'm going up to the corner, my apologies, let me start again. I'm going up to the space in the middle and I'm going to put two double crochets in there and then a third one. And then the same thing in the corner, three double crochets. And that's me taking this square up again, let me move this. It's taken the square, uh, the side has gone up and it's now ready to join to the blanket itself. So I'm going to put my hook into the corner of the blanket and pull through and pull through. So that's a slip stitch and that takes the place of any chain stitches that you would normally put in the corner of a, of a granny square. I've got three more uh, double crochets to do in that same corner. 
and then I'm going to move along to the first space along on the blanket, make a slip stitch. Three double crochets. And another slip stitch. Three double crochets. And we're back, well, not back, but we're on to the next corner of the little square. So I'm going to slip stitch into the next space on the blanket and I can swing this round, Don't, I won't worry too much about all these and I'm going to come down the side of this square with three double crochets and three in the middle and three at the bottom. So we're going to make half of the corner at the bottom and if you look at it you'll see that I have gone up, around and down and the double crochet makes a really nice, neat, narrower uh, edge to the join. Now before, I, I, I'm not going to worry about coming along the bottom, as I said before, that's going to be left. So let's take another colour. I'm going to take a second square, line it up, and I'm going to put three double crochets into the bottom corner of this square. And then I'm going to slip stitch to the first space on that first square. Get that, I've actually pulled through a bit of the yarn. Here we go. So that is me anchored to this um, first square. Three double crochets and a slip stitch into the next space. Sorry about this. I, oops, let me take that back. Again, as usual, when I'm doing this, I'm actually looking through the blanket, uh, through the um, camera as I do this, so it's a little bit difficult. There we go. Right, slip stitch. Now I'm at the corner, so I'm going to put in my normal three double crochets. And I'm going to slip stitch into the top corner of my first square. And I'm also going to slip stitch into the space on the blanket and finish off. That corner space. And three double crochets. And then uh, slip stitch and we're at the next corner. So I'm going to put in my three double crochets and slip stitch into the blanket and then come down the side. Finish off this square corner And down to the bottom we put in three double crochets into the bottom corner and there you can see we've got two squares attached and of course the beauty of continuous join as you go is that um, you've got one end when you start and when you finally finish you've got another end and that's the only two you have to sew in so that's the beauty of it one two three and of course, this continuous join as you go is only done when you're using the same colour uh, for joining each square. Now I'm just going to work on, I'll do this third one and then I'll leave you to, and I'll finish the right, right round and then I'll show you what happens when we get to the end. Into the corner of the square and into the corner or not rather the space of the blanket 
three double crochets. Slip stitch, three double crochets. Slip stitch, three double crochets. Slip stitch and down the side. And that's the first half of that corner done. So there we have three of these squares. Now I will keep going along until I come to the corner and I'll show you what there's, there's nothing special to do there but I'll take you around the corner with that then I'll finish all the way round to back to here and then I'll show you how we do the end the last round which goes round the edge of the squares to put the dark brown edging round them so I'll see you when I've got to the corner uh, right, now I've actually zipped right along the bottom and up one side, so I'll show you what happens um, when we join this corner one now, and then I'll come right along and back down to the beginning. So we can s s move this round. Just, I, I quite like working my joining stitches on a table, but you can do them on your lap. And it's, it's nice that you can move your um, work round so that it's at the right um, side to work on. So imagine that we've come round two sides of the blanket and I'm going to take um, another square to join. By the way, I turned my squares over to the wrong side. It's not essential for particularly for these small squares, but um, I have just got in the habit of it. Right, so I've, you know, this was going to go here. So all I need to do is to put my three half trebles, sorry, three double crochets in that corner and find the first space along the side of the previous square, three double crochets in the middle space and there's a second space on that um, square before so we put a slip stitch in there three double crochets and now you've got two corners here and you can slip stitch into both corners or you can um, work diagonally, it doesn't really matter. So I could, for example, have just done one slip stitch diagonally into this blue corner and then when I put this um, square in, slip stitch diagonally into the, the corner of this one. But um, that really doesn't matter. I've put two in and, you know, for as far as I'm concerned, two makes it that bit more secure. So now I'm going to work down this side and then put my next square next to it and work up that side and so on, down, put my next one up, round and down. So I'm going to work all the way around my um, funny small blanket and I'll see you back where we started and I'll show you how to do the bottom edge. Now I've worked all the way around my rather strange looking blanket, mini blanket. Um, that was, you can see by this tail, this was the square that we started with and I worked all the way round and I've come back down the fourth side of the blanket and I'm just about to put the last side in on this last square. So I have done my three double crochets into the corner and I'm going to slip stitch into the corner of the blanket. I'll slip stitch into the corner of that first square as well, just to anchor it. These slip stitches are um, fairly optional if you want to do two. I quite like doing two, it just keeps it nice and firm. 
put my three double crochets in and find the space on the very first square and put in a slip stitch. Three more double crochets. And the next space on that first square and then we're down to the corner. So I'm going to put in, now this is where we're going to start to work all the way around the bottom. So I'm going to put in the first three double crochets of that very last corner of that square. And then I'm going to slip stitch into the corner of this square. And then I'm going to come back to my very last square. I'll take this tail out of the way just now. And I'm going to put my three double crochets in here to finish it off. One, two, three. And now I've changed direction and I have come down this side, but I've completed this corner. And so I can now quite simply work around the outside. And this is quite an easy part. So that's three double crochets, three double crochets. And this is an open corner in as much as there's, it's not joining onto anything. So I'm going to chain two and put in three more double crochets as I turn around the corner. So there's the that nice neat corner in position. Three more double crochets and this is an interesting part. Now I've come to um, an intersection and we've got to put in, we've got to, we've done half of this corner and we've done half of this corner, so we have to complete both of these corners. And the way to do it is to, as usual, come over to the corner and put in three double crochets. Now, if I was to jump over to fill, to, to do the three cro double crochets in this corner, it would leave a fairly long um, wobbly stitch. So. The way to jump over this join is to chain one, which is just carrying your yarn. And then I'm going to pull it apart slightly and you can see that gap. I'm going to put my hook into the gap and make a little slip stitch. And then chain one again. And that has just carried my yarn neatly over that join and I can put three double crochets into the next corner. I've got three to go in the middle. And we're at another of these corners. So three double crochets. And chain one. And I'm just going to grab my yarn there. Chain one and find that space in the middle and pull through a slip stitch. Chain one and three double crochets in the next corner. That lets that corner breathe a little, I think. It can lie nice and flat, as you can see, and it's just carried the yarn across from one corner to the other. So you can see what's happening here. I'm going to work along here remembering about these um, joins each time. Just put your chain one, uh, slip stitch chain one between the two sets of um, three stitches and we'll work all the way around. I'll just get you past this corner. So that's three, chain one, slip stitch, chain one and three, three double crochets in the next, oops, three 
and then I'm on another outside corner so it's three double crochets chain two to form the corner and three double crochets there we go so I shall go all the way round and when I come back to where what we'll do is I'll, I'll start the video again when I'm just about to come up to the where we started and I'll just um, finish off this um, border and as you can see I've worked all the way around the four sides of my little mini blanket and I'm on to the very last part of the square this was the very first square we ever made on this and um, I've worked all the way around so all I need to do as you can see there is only half of that corner done on that very first square so all I need to do is finish that corner with three double crochet stitches I'm going to just chain one and then I'm going to slip stitch. Now it doesn't really make an awful lot of difference. You, strictly speaking, you should be slip stitching into the top of your first um, chain one. It's a bit difficult to find in this um, because we're working on such a small uh, stitch. I'm just going to slip stitch into anywhere in that corner and cut my yarn I can find my scissors. I'll do that later. I'll cut my yarn later. But anyway, that is um, continuous join as you go. And the beauty of it, as I said before, is once I've cut this yarn, I've got exactly two threads to weave in as opposed to two on each square if I had been doing them individually. So I hope that has explained a little bit about the mysteries of continuous join as you go because I do know that it does um, put some people off. Uh, they just feel that it's too complicated. It's really not at all complicated. It's nice and neat. And this is my rather surprising looking colours of my um, mini blanket um, example. So that's continuous join as you go. This time it's been done with double crochet. It can also be done with half treble which is my most common uh, stitch for using it. can also be done with a treble stitch and this particular um, demonstration is um, applicable to any of the blankets that I do which have um, continuous join as you go around the outside edge of the blanket. So I hope you've enjoyed it and happy crocheting. Bye for now.